We take for granted the luxury of being able to pick and choose which level of purity we want in our silver, whether it be in the form of silverware, coins, jewelry, and the like. Each of the purities and the alloys has a specific purpose, but that's not, not always been the case. If we have to go back, way back to the Roman times to see the pioneering of recycling silver, we're going to talk about it in this video as we explore. And what are the two metals that they wanted to get out of their silver? Well, I'll talk, tell you uh, as I review an article here from mining.com that tells us about how the Romans pioneered this idea of silver recycling. And how do we know this? Well, through geologic studies. And we're talking about pollution in Greenland's ice that shows that the Romans were pioneers of recycling. And in a new paper, researchers at the University of Liverpool and the University of Warwick explained that extracting silver from ores and refining it at mints resulted in a lot of lead pollution. That is the first metal. And I don't have any lead here to show you. I don't have a bullet hanging around here to, to pop out a handy. But nonetheless, I do have the other metal that I'm going to tell you about here in a moment. But you think about it, yes, indeed, getting lead out, for sure. Lead is toxic, and maybe they knew something back then, but my guess is they probably wanted to have more confidence in their money. And we know that there are some Roman coins that had very high purity of silver. And so we know kind of you know where that it came from, but this further explains how it occurred. And we know that extracting silver from ores and refining at these mints and did result in this pollution. Ancient pollution entered the atmosphere, drifted across the Atlantic, and left a pollution fingerprint in Greenland, in the ice there. However, there was a dramatic decline in lead pollution levels in the ice during the late Roman Republic, even though coins were still being produced. So logically, we can kind of make the assumption that they found a way to get the lead out. The article notes that during the 1st and 2nd centuries B.C., Rome's access to silver mines in Iberia and southern France was interrupted by conflict. Deliberate debasement of the denarii, the predominant silver coins of the Romans, with copper is often considered to show interruptions in silver production. Yet despite slight dips in the fineness of silver coins, especially around the times of the social and civil wars of the 1st century B.C., this does not provide enough of an explanation for the drops in lead pollution. Uh, to explain the phenomenon, uh, researchers uh, Ponting and Jonathan Wood uh, point to Romans recycling silver often plundered following conflicts in Iberia and southern France in order to make coins. They analyzed how much of this metal was present. Gold, that's right. How much gold was present in the coinage, given that all silver produced in antiquity contained small quantities of the yellow metal. At around 120 BC, clusters of coins began appearing with very low levels of gold in them. The silver used for these coins also appears to have become part of the silver supply for coinage in the first half of the first century BC. Then, in 49 BC, a new infusion of silver with high levels of gold in it appeared to enter circulation. Given that Julius Caesar re returned to Rome from his battles with the Gauls uh, in 49 BC, the researchers proposed that the new silver came into circulation was plundered by Caesar's army. Debasing silver was one way to deal with fluctuations in the silver supply. Melting down existing silver, either yours or someone else's, was another. Wood said, for the Romans, recycling coins would have been considerably less expensive than recycling new silver, a benefit for their finances as well as the environment. So yes, indeed, but they apparently found this way in order to, to make this happen. Of course, we know that a lot of those early uh, Roman denarii, they certainly had high purity uh, when, it, when, when looked at a spectrograph or measuring to measure the electromagnetic signature of the metal. It's pretty remarkable, but 
Yes, indeed. And we know that we can get very pure, very pure gold and very pure silver now. Of course, you know, this bar here I actually showcased, um, you know, in a video where I melted it down from other pure silver bars. So the purity was not affected. How you refine that. And it's pretty, pretty amazing how that occurs. But uh, when you think about uh, silver and the purposes of it, you know, silver does have many uses. Uh, and the more pure, the better, especially for things like to be able to use as a um, as a as a medical agent. You want the high highest silver, especially for colloidal silver, uh, is needed. And that's why many people that do it at home use Canadian maple leaves because they're the most common, cheapest four nines fine silver item out there. But there's a lot more four nines fine silver products. But the real Canadian mint has really been revolutionary in providing. Uh, that four nines fine silver, I think was the first mint to do so. So refining it and recycling it is another thing. We know that there's, it was a company called Ohio Precious Metals that was eventually bought out by um, by Elemental, which is now out of business. Um, they do silver recycling. And I think uh, companies like Asahi, I believe, do it as well too. A lot of, a lot of organizations do it. They recycle silver. And, uh, and in that recycling, they will take it and um, and they will uh, refine it down and and utilize to be able to get it with the less impurities in it. And so refining, recycling are all part of it. And speaking of refining silver, well, you know, you find a nice piece like this that has got this this high purity here. This is nine 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 plus, and usually that plus means that it's probably less than half. Uh, that plus is like, for for instance, the American Silver Eagles. Is 0.9993, and uh, but there's others where you can get four nines fine. Now there was a private mint called the um, something Royal Mint that uh, produced several different uh, rounds, um, and they were five nines pure silver. That company went out of business, and uh, they're hard to come by. But uh, I had a chance to buy some at some point in time, and missed out. Figured well. Somebody else would probably take up that mantle because I really wasn't as big on the quality of the coins that I saw. They were not struck, you know, to the finest detail that I'd like. But it was kind of a neat thing to have five nines pure silver. You know, there's only one mint that makes five nines pure gold, and that's Royal Canadian Mint. But to get five nines pure silver, you can't get it unless you find those on the secondary market now. And if you do, they're pretty pricey. But uh, I think it's pretty fascinating. But uh, you know, that they can refine to that level. And uh, how much of that is taken from recycled silver? Because it's a lot easier to to further refine down four nines fine silver than it would be to refine down um, to go uh, the other direction. Some of these older rounds are going to be three nines plus. Uh, but, you know, pure silver is something we just take for granted these days. And a lot of that is because of recycling that is done in mass nowadays. So it's pretty, pretty remarkable. And fascinating and interesting indeed, but uh, I believe that uh, we'll probably still see more of that. Uh, and I've already talked about how silver can be recycled and extracted from sewage. That's right. I'll never forget doing that story. I've always thought that was fascinating. Based off of some universe, a university study, they were actually able to extract silver from sewage. Uh, pretty, pretty amazing. And as the price of silver goes up, they will find, and even if it doesn't go up, they will find economical ways to be able to extract silver out uh, and uh, take it from old electronics and the like, and maybe even from a Tomahawk cruise missile, which some say is anywhere between, um, you know, uh, several kilos to 500 ounces uh, of, of silver in, in, in a Tomahawk cruise missile. And you think about that thing launching and exploding, where is that silver going? Well, it's, it's basically going back into the dust and into the environment around it which technically could be mined, no problem, especially if there's a lot, you know. Uh, so no silver is completely lost, except for maybe those out in satellites in space. And I saw a recent graph from this, from an uh, article that somebody else sent to me I thought was quite fascinating that uh, the amount of satellites that are in the, in the atmosphere, of course, the amount of silver in those satellites is negligible, uh, you know, obviously. But still, that silver that likely will probably not be recovered uh, is, <laughs> for quite a long time. Uh, you know, the satellites usually, sometimes they come and burn into the atmosphere and they come back down and usually they fall in the ocean or, or somewhere that where, and that where is that silver going? 
Uh, maybe it comes back down and rains down literally in the atmosphere and other places. It's little micro particles. But uh, fascinating indeed. But let me know what your thoughts are about this story. I always find these stories kind of fascinating and interesting. I thought I'd bring it to you. So I want to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate. Yeah, I want you to like this video if you don't mind. Share it, comment, and subscribe.